Computer, tell me the date. It's Monday, March 20th. Monday, March 20th, 2023. The 38th day for the Love On campaign. Loving On, love to the alienated. Love you, Credence, miss you. And speaking of, it's been 1,381 days since I've last seen my alienated son. This is hard to see, sorry. This was a sign that I obviously had taped up at my protest and I need to find, um, I'm learning. Plus it's going to be nicer weather soon, spring's coming. So, um, plus I need to make better signs um, that I like just because it's hard to read, I can tell. <laughs> so this one says, this is what I, when everybody wants to know why I'm there when I'm protesting, when you're driving by and you wanna know what I'm doing. Take two. So, I'm alienated from my first son, and then I have three teenagers that live with me. They're all in school right now, but my husband's at home, and we have animals, so you get to see me as I am, raw, uncensored. Yes, I do editing, but nothing that is, um, I don't take anything out of context and it's just to make it easier, you know? Like, for instance, if I edited the barking out and I didn't do all this explaining and stuff, but I just want to show you that what you see is what you get. <laughs> this is it. And you haven't seen anything yet. Okay, back to my sign. So when you're driving by or walking by and you see me outside with my music, my bullhorn and you don't know what's going on but you know you're in the neighborhood and you want to know what's going on I want you to be able to read why what is it you know you might not come and talk to me you might drive by so this is my why I did not abandon my son the people who birthed and raised me tricked me into letting him go on a vacation for a week to see my grandparents in Montana they never gave credence back to me with the sad angry face and then on the other side, I have, I'm standing up to my personal abusers and alienators. They abducted my firstborn son back in 2004. What if it was your child? What if it was your children? Would you still be silent or would you take a stand? I may have lost my battle, but I am not willing to lose the war. And if there had been the resources or people speaking up back when I was fresh into the parental alienation abuse, things could have maybe been different, could have been better. And I know that I get people thinking, I had one of my blood related cousins that actually came around and did talk to me and did visit me. He told me that everything I've been teaching him about parental alienation, he got to thinking and was like, hmm, I wonder what kind of what, what I've been contributing to my own kids when it comes to pollination and his ex. You know, we didn't really get into it or anything. We didn't really go in it from there, but just the fact that somebody in my family who is hard to change and hard-headed, headstrong, and from the same people that don't want anything to do with me and people who don't change, for him to have actually tell me something like that and to let me know that I got him thinking meant so much to me. You know, I actually got him thinking about the cause, about what it's like to be put in that situation and not just for you or your ex or the other party, but for your children. To love your kids more than hating the other party. You know, it was kind of a little late for the sense for him too because he didn't know about all that. But he thought about it, he, I got in his head, and that's everything. If I can get into my stubborn cousin's head <laughs> with our type of blood, I can get into anybody's head, right? And I haven't answered this on Facebook either. One of my friends asked when I was protesting, uh, she was nice about it, I'm sorry, but don't you think this is embarrassing for credence? I've thought about it, I get that, yes I know, I understand how horrifying it must be for my son to realize everything that I'm doing, but it would be more embarrassing and horrifying 
have to have him think that he's not important enough for me to try or to even stand up at all. The what worries me is for me not to do anything about anything and for him to think that I'm okay with him thinking and believing that the lies are the way it is and that it's true. It's more embarrassing for me to not do what I'm doing. It's more embarrassing it has been embarrassing for everybody to think or to just go with the flow and think that whatever it is that they think, that's what's embarrassing. I don't want him to think that I'm like them and that I'm going to go out like them. I refuse to be like the evil ones and I'm trying to break the vicious cycle. I don't understand why people don't seem to understand that and then when I do explain it, they, they, they don't seem to understand that either. It doesn't make sense to me. I understand change is hard, but change is inevitable, and it's the one thing that's constant in our lives. So if we can actually embrace the craziness, go with the flow, and not fight it, for me personally, it's been better. I was always told, hush, hush, to lie, don't tell anybody anything. I was always worried about what I could say, what I could think at all in any times. Now that I'm not worried about it and I speak my truth and I'm true to my own self, I'm happy, I'm free. It's amazing. It sounds corny, but it's true. It's, it's amazing to be me. It's amazing to be free to be me. Might be sad as some of y'all because I'm a 40 year old grown woman that <laughs> took a long time to get here to be finally confident. When most women my age have graduated high school and done many other great accomplishments. My greatest, my greatest accomplishment to myself is coming back from everything, coming back from somebody who has never been or is suicidal. When I found out that Credence wasn't coming back to me and they were keeping him from me, that was a little bit of a suicidal time. Not in the sense where I thought about it, but like, that was my life. Everything was taken from me and I didn't know what to do with myself. I felt like dying, I felt like death, yes. So for those who are suicidal or turn into, tend to have suicidal tendencies, I can relate in some sense where I get that sense of desperateness, the sense of urgency of what it's like to lose control and um, I don't ever want to ever feel like that ever again and they kept that hold over me for the longest time and they never will and the more that I speak up the more that I protest the more that I raise awareness on the harms of parental nation abuse the more I educate the public that hopefully there'll be a prevention plan and nobody else will have to go through what my son and I have gone through. It's not natural, it's not normal to be torn away from somebody that you love, from somebody that loves you, somebody that cares about you. I was not harming Credence, I was not harming him. I love him. I might have done some things to fuck up or some things that they didn't like, but I didn't do anything to warrant them taking him from me and for them to take him the way they had and then to convince me <laughs> that that was the only way and then to try to convince me in every way that I abandoned him, that's unforgivable. They didn't even try to come to me and say, hey, we think you're fucking up. We're going to take your kid, get your shit together. They never wanted me to have my son. They never wanted me to be a mother. They never wanted me to be happy. They never wanted me to be me. They don't want any of this now. They don't want me to be happy with my husband and my other kids, my immediate family. They tell my son that I chose my immediate family, which I include Credence in, but to them they don't. That I chose my husband and my three other kids over my firstborn son because my firstborn son's biological father is not involved. He's not part of the picture, which is another reason why my parents were able to do what they did because he wasn't involved. How many 18 year olds have to pay for their own will? How many 18 year olds have to, to make sure that if you die that your parents get your kid? I mean, I get that, that's scary, but they convinced me that if I had put my son's biological father's 
name on the birth certificate because he's Mexican and he's an illegal that he could take my son to Mexico and that there'd be nothing America could or would do about it. Now whether that's right or wrong, they scared the shit out of me and I did not put my, I did not put the biological father's name on the birth certificate, which I found out later, way too late. That's what kind of kicked me in the ass. Had I put his name on the birth certificate, they wouldn't have been able to do what they've done in court to take him away from me as much because I put unknown father. They would have had to do whatever it is they had to do, whether legality is not. I had would have put a father's name down. So because I made it easy for them and listened to them and didn't and then made it a will, like they made it hardcore where they really hoped that I was gonna die or kill myself or go to jail and they didn't want me to come back from that and they did not think I would grow up and fight back. And to try to make me feel bad for that alone, they can't because they've already done so much to me. This is free to me, this is liberating. I'll never go backwards. And I recommend anybody who's going through it to look up your local laws and do what you can. I didn't know that you could personally protest people's houses until about five years ago. I know people who go protest outside of CPS workers' houses, judges. You just need to know your area, that law. For example, Josephine and Douglas County in Oregon, Grants Pass, Glendale, Oregon, you're not allowed to use a bullhorn. It's not legal there. But here in Marion County, Salem, state capital of Oregon, you're allowed to use the bullhorn. That's amazing. People aren't supposed to be able to touch you and harass you, but if you're friends with the cops, they can do whatever they want. So that's why it's important to always have others with you and to have cameras. I like to wear a body cam at all times. Uh, there was at one point the neighbor came out and threw my signs to the floor and chest bumped me and I was just setting up and I only had the body cam on and the cop said that the camera wasn't good enough, he couldn't even tell. So I was like, hold up, hold up. You're gonna tell me that nothing's gonna happen, she can just do what she wants? He's like, no, 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 she can't just do what she wants. Just gave me some bullshit five minute answer and then went inside the house, talked to them and then left, nothing happened. But let me tell you, if I go up to somebody and throw their shit to the ground and or chest bump them, you know I'm going to jail. You know in a heartbeat. Whether it's a, um, a quick uh, book and release, it doesn't matter. My ass is going to go to jail. The difference is the cops don't like me and I stand up for my rights and I'm not friends with the cops. So be careful out there. Be careful of where you are, who you are. <sighs> I, um, my demeanor is changing because this is a hot topic, hard topic. It's kind of unrelated, but it still correlates to everything in life. So my husband and I are activists, cop watchers, auditors, whatever you want to call it. So we know, me personally, my experience, because I've met a lot of people and I've seen a lot of people or I just watch a lot of audits and videos on YouTube. The fact that I'm white, <laughs> I know that I have white privilege when, I, when I'm videotaping. The fact that I'm still able to do this and I can tell the difference, I get it. I get it that not everybody can just take a camera and go and do what I do because not that they're afraid, yeah, maybe they're afraid, but because they don't want to die, because they're afraid for their life being, they know what, what it's like on the streets. So I get that, I get that. I'm in a different area, and whether I am in a different area or not, I get it that I'm, I, I have white privilege. So at least I'm trying to use that to my advantage and expose those who need to be exposed, the evil ones, people who abuse and alienate and are never held accountable for their actions. They get away with whatever they want. 
So at least by exposing them, letting the world know who they are and trying to break the vicious cycle and educate and teach my own a different, better way. That's what I'm about, you guys. I'm trying always harder to be better. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I, 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 I know everything. I just don't want to be like the evil ones and I know I don't want to be like them. And I'm trying really hard to be better because we know better. We need to do better. Be about it, know about it. Be better, know better. Indeed. All right, guys. <laughs> Love to the alienated, loving on, love on campaign. Join in on the movement, start some daily videos with us, daily document your perjury alienation abuse journey. More and more are starting to come out with their story and even though it doesn't seem to be helping because everybody's everywhere and everything, we are coming to, we need unity. Unity is key to end perjury alienation. We're all doing different things, which is great, that's fine, because we're all doing different things to raise awareness on the harms of PA, but at the same time, we need to come together, especially, especially next month on April 25th, Parental Alienation Awareness Day. Wear the royal blue hoodies or anything royal blue, and um, you can protest outside your own alienators and abusers house, you can go to the courthouse, you can go to parks, you can go anywhere and educate people. There's also um, blowing bubbles, at noon for 10 minutes. Everybody blows bubbles. It's supposed to be friendly, bring in the kids and draw on people to talk to them and stuff. So whatever it is that you got going on, please join in, join in on the movement. We love our children, we miss our children and we'll do anything for you guys. We'll do anything for the cause. Anything for you, Credence. I love you. Crazy for Credence. Signing out. Yay, yay. <laughs>